welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited everybody's here. Today, we're gonna get started with a lighter, no fuss recipe that you can enjoy tonight, or really any day of the week. Cause let's face it, after all the festive feasting that went on over the holiday season, it's time to lighten things up a little bit, but still enjoy something that's totally delicious. So we're gonna make my curried lentil stuffed squash. It's a take on a recipe in my, I know. Let's take on a recipe in my newest cookbook. I am so, so excited about it. To be honest, this recipe was inspired um, by my husband. Aaron always thought when we first started dating, he was like, oh, Mary doesn't eat meat. What could she eat? He'd always want to make me a stuffed pepper, but I don't like stuffed peppers. You know when you first start dating somebody and you're like, you don't want to tell them that their idea is bad? <laughs> So this is what I made up just to kind of get that stuffed veg vibe, but something more delicious. So the first thing I want to start with is the lentils and that stuffing. So over here, I have got some brown lentils, just about three quarters of a cup. Now you could use any type of lentil you wanted. If you had split red lentils, that would be perfect as well. Brown lentils cook up in about 20 minutes. Split red take only about 12 to 15. So if you want quicker, go for those. So I've got these here and I've rinsed them off under the tap and I've also sorted through them just to make sure Sure there's no kind of debris in there because like with a lot of kind of dry pulses or beans you can sometimes find one that looks kind of funky toss that one out you don't want that all right now I'm gonna add those on into a pot and lentils are a super great source of protein. They've got a ton of fiber in them. Now to cook those up, I'm gonna add in three cups of low sodium vegetable broth. Now if you did eat meat, you could totally use chicken broth. That would work too. Whatever type of broth you have on hand. And even if you didn't have broth, you could just use water. I won't tell anybody, it'll still be delicious. <laughs> so you wanna bring that up to a boil. Once it boils, pop a lid on, turn the heat down to simmer, and let that go for about 20 minutes until tender but not mushy. So while that does its thing, I'm gonna get to work on the stuffing. So or the veg for this stuffing. So the first thing I need is a red onion. Now, I say red onion, but you can use whatever onion you want. If you only have yellow onions at home, feel free to use that. If you have shallots because you're fancy, feel free to use that as well. Essentially, you just wanna dice this baby up and you can dice it as big or small as you'd like, depending on what your family likes. I'm gonna go kind of for like a medium dice, mainly because I gotta do this quickly and a medium dice takes less time than a small dice. So just gonna chop that baby up. And if you've watched this show before, you see that when I chop an onion, I just go kind of straight down and I don't do the this way. A lot of times chefs will tell you you gotta go down and then this way as well. But the onion's already done that for me. It's got those layers. So just this one way and you cut down the other way and you've got perfect dice every single time. Nice. Thank you. That is nice, I agree. All right, perfect. So now in addition to that onion, I'm also gonna add in a stalk of celery. This is where you could use any sort of crunchy veg you've got hanging out in your fridge. If you've got anything left over from the holidays, from maybe that like stuffing or gravy making, feel free to use that. Carrots would be delicious. Parsnips would even be nice in here if you're feeling fancy. But I'm just gonna dice those babies up as well. And that little bit of celery just gives you just a bit of kind of like herby green crunch in this stuffing. Okay, perfect, that looks great. Now I've got a pan here over about medium heat and there's a tablespoon of oil in there. So into there I wanna add those nice beautiful veg just to start cooking down. And then as soon as those veg hit the heat of the pan, you wanna hit it with some salt and pepper. Basically here, this salt is just gonna remove some of the moisture, helping these babies cook down even quicker. Now as we start here, this looks absolutely delish. We've got that onion, we've got that celery, but now I wanna sweeten things up a little bit. Cause for me right now, this time of year, I want a ton of flavor. I don't wanna leave all that flavor in December. I wanna bring it into January too. So I've also got a green apple here that I've diced up. A green apple is really nice. It's tart, it's bright, it's delish. So I'm gonna add that on in as well. Give that a stir. Honestly, it sounds weird, but it's totally delish. I totally, I'm, I'm not lying to you, friends. All right, now I'd wanna cook that down for about five minutes or until it's nice and caramelized and you get something that looks kinda like this. Absolutely beautiful, nice and kinda tender. As you can tell, we had more time before. We chopped it smaller before, but that's okay. <laughs> now into there to build on that flavor as well, I wanna add in a little bit of garlic. And by a little bit, I mean three whole cloves because that's how I do things. <laughs> so add that garlic on into the pan. I'm gonna toss in a bit more oil just to get things moving. 
And then to season this up even further, I'm gonna add in a spice blend. Now you could use any sort of spice blend you want, but I really love using curry powder, just store-bought curry powder. You could use either medium, you could use spicy, you could use mild. I go for a medium usually, and you wanna use about a tablespoon of that in here. That's gonna bring real nice kind of sweet, round, delicious flavor. And the spice cupboard is your friend when you're looking for like something extra delicious. That's a ton of flavor in like no time flat. All right, that already smells so good. I don't know if you can smell that curry powder yet. Out of control. Now, I also wanna add in a little bit of lemon juice. The lemon juice is gonna help kind of deglaze that pan and bring all those flavors together. So just add those straight on in. You want that curry powder to toast for about 30 seconds. This is just gonna kind of bring everything together. Listen, I love a lemon, even when a lemon <laughs> doesn't love me. You know when you get like a lemon of a lemon <laughs> and there's no juice in it? Living worst, I feel like you like lost the kitchen lottery there. <laughs> All right, that's looking beautiful. Now into there, I'm also gonna throw in some greens because this time of year, I don't know about you, but I'm always trying to amp up the greens in my diet. So I've just got some baby spinach here that I'm gonna toss in. You could even do kale, you could do collards, any sort of green you want. And I just want that to wilt down just a little bit. That is looking absolutely beautiful. Now I'm gonna take all this beautiful kind of herby, delicious, spiced up mix and pop it into my lentils. And through the magic of TV, I got some lentils right here <laughs> that are already cooked. So we've got those, they're perfectly tender and beautiful. And I'm just gonna add all of that veg with that apple and that curry powder right into there. That's looking absolutely beautiful. Already, I would eat this. To be honest, this as is, as a little salad for your next lunch, very, very tasty. But to amp up the flavor even more, I'm gonna add in half a cup each of dried cranberries, chopped up apricots. I know, I know what you got hanging around after all those charcuterie boards. You got your dried fruit. And then I'm also gonna toss in some nuts. I'm using walnuts because I love them. You can chop them up, leave them whole, but any sort of good nut is perfect. Again, adding more protein and fiber into the mix. Give that a toss. Now for a little bit of brightness, I'm gonna toss in a little bit, just about two tablespoons of some parsley and cilantro. Give that a chop up. And if you don't like cilantro, that's totally fine. Feel free to leave it out. You could toss in really any sort of herb you want in here. I just love that cilantro with that curry powder. It's really, really nice. Now give that a toss. And at this point, again, beautiful salad for your lunch, but we're stuffing the squash. So I've got some squash over here that I roasted off in a 400 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes or until tender. I just cut them in half, so they're beautiful. Add in that beautiful stuffing that's full of all those little Julie fruits those nuts in there, that curry powder. If stuff spills over the side, that's okay. That's just a snack for you before you serve the dish. Just add that on in. And I don't know, um, I don't know how well y'all know me, but I'm not gonna make you a dinner without some cheese on it. So <laughs> I'm gonna toss a little bit of feta cheese right over the top of each one of these. Looking absolutely beautiful. Drizzle that with a little bit of oil. And then these babies go into a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes just to heat through and get that nice golden brown feta on top. And then we have got new oven mitts, first of all, which is very exciting. Ooh, look at this little number. That feta is so golden brown, totally delish. And like the perfect veg name. I'm so excited about this. Serve that little baby up, just in a bowl. A bowl within a bowl. And I'm gonna eat it with this spoon because that's what we do here. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.